for all the sports and uh, now we are i mean uh, are going to look into the uh, point number c the weak points we already discussed something about uh, that weak point so we are starting from there now uh, that is from chapter 2 verse 20 we will read that first then uh, we will uh, move on i mean weak points of the uh, the literature that is from chapter 2 verse 20 uh i have this against you that you tolerate that woman jezebel who calls herself a prophetess and that is teaching to, that is teaching to do some practical to, pra to practice sexual morality and to eat food sacrifice okay so the main weak point of the church was uh, they were tolerating or permitting the things of jezebel the teachings of jezebel uh, the false prophetess so uh, the identity of this woman is not clear uh, but there are uh, mainly two opinions about uh, uh, this woman that uh, the first one is uh, we already discussed on that you know, right okay we already discussed about that and uh, the first one is there was a there was a woman in that church named uh, uh, Jezebel and she was a false prophetess okay she was a false prophetess and the second opinion is uh, there was a woman who had the spirit of Jezebel of uh, old testament so in 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 uh, first kings and uh, the other books we will be able to see about uh, 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 the woman uh, named Jezebel uh, from old testament so some people says that there was a woman in the church at Thyatira uh, who had the spirit of the uh, Jezebel uh, of the old testament now we will go to the next uh, Uh, heading that is Jezebel and the spirit of Jezebel. Jezebel and the spirit of Jezebel. So we have uh, in the slide there are many uh, points written. Uh, I mean, uh, as soon as you write the, all those uh, uh, points, I'll be just explaining all those things. And the heading is Jezebel and the spirit of Jezebel. So let us see who was uh, this Jezebel. Who was this Jezebel? Jezebel was the daughter of the king Ethbar. Jezebel was the daughter of the king Ethbar, and she was the wife of Ahab, the king of Samaria. She was the wife of Ahab, the king of Samaria. and she is known as the most abominable woman she is known as the most abominable woman and uh, the father of jezebel father of jezebel ethbal was the priest of Ast i mean uh, astoreth astoreth the father of jezebel is ethbal and ethbal was the priest of astoreth and who was this astoreth astoreth was the female deity of sexuality astoreth was a female deity of sexuality again while this is uh, uh, ethbal was working as a priest of the temple of sidon you know this uh, uh, ethbal the father of uh, uh, jezebel while he was working as a priest of the temple of sidon this man he killed the king by cheating and ethbal became the king so that happened uh, by cheating you know uh, ethbal Uh, by cheating he i mean killed the king and by that i mean ethbal became the king of sidon so that was the uh, incident that happened in, in in those days and again jezebel also had the same spirit of her father you know jezebel also had the same spirit of her father you know her father i um, mean uh, did uh, many wicked things and uh, her father killed the king and he became uh, uh, i mean uh, as a king uh, by cheating then again we understand that jezebel also was having the same spirit of her father okay her father her, her father's uh, i mean uh, character and her father's spirit was 
the spirit of murder the spirit of murder and uh, the spirit of deceiving and the spirit of immorality spirit of murder spirit of deceiving and spirit of immorality these are the uh, special character and the spirit of uh, Jezebel's father with Baal and I told you uh, Ahab was the husband of Jezebel Ahab was the husband of Jezebel and Ahab was a cruel and wicked king Ahab was a cruel and wicked king so I'm giving some of the uh, background about the Jezebel uh, and then we will I mean think about what was the spirit of this Jezebel that was influenced by the uh, Taitaira church okay so Ahab was a cruel and wicked king uh, you know when you read first king chapter 21 verse 25 first king chapter 21 uh, verse 25 shall, shall we read that verse then we will move on first king chapter 21 verse 5 there was none who sold himself to what to what to do what was evil in the sight of the lord like ahab whom jezebel his wife incited yes so ahab was a cruel and wicked king and but at the same time at the end of his life he decided to repent about his mistakes so that's what uh, we read in the chapter 21 at the end of his uh, I mean, life he decided to repent about his mistakes but uh, this woman he means ahab's wife jezebel uh, did not allow him to do that did not allow him to do that that means wicked person was jezebel so jezebel the wicked queen he she is known as the jezebel the wicked queen wicked queen now another important thing is both in the old testament and in the new testament you know we can see there are many negative connotations about uh, this woman jezebel in the old testament and also in the new testament we can understand that there are many many negative connotations about her you know whatever she did was not acceptable in the presence of god and whatever he did was not pleasable in the presence of god and she did everything against the will and purpose and the word of god for example you know when you read first king chapter 18 first king chapter 18 you will know that she worshipped the pagan idols and she reintroduced them to israel she worshipped the pagan idols and she reintroduced them to the people of israel that is written in first king chapter 18. now we will read the first king chapter 18 verse 4 also first king chapter 18 verse 4 and when Jezebel cut off the prophets of the Lord, Obadiah took a hundred prophets and hid them by fifties and fed them with bread and water. So she killed the Lord's prophets. She killed the Lord's prophets. That's the character of Jezebel. Okay. And she gave the shelter and protection for the 850 prophets of the Baal and Ashereth in the palace. 18 verse 19, first Kings chapter 18 verse 19. Now therefore send and gather all Israel to me at Mount Carmel and the 450 prophets of Baal and the 400 prophets of Asherah who eat at Jezebel's table. Okay, so that, that, that particular verse uh, uh, speaks at that question. And she gave the shelter and protection for the 850 uh, uh, prophets of Baal and Asherah in the palace itself, in the palace itself, okay? So these prophets were not the prophets of Jehovah God, but these prophets were from the, I mean, Baal and Asherah. So, I mean, she was able to give the shelter and protection for them inside the palace, okay? Again, wrongfully, this person killed a man to take the possession of his vineyard. You know, when you read uh, 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 verses, I mean, First Kings chapter 
21 verses 1 through 22 chapter 53 okay first kings chapter 21 verses 1 through chapter 22 verse 53 this is a long portion you know when you go through that verses we understand that this woman this jezebel wrongfully killed a man to take possessions of his vineyard that means uh, she grabbed the land of naboth that that history we know that you know uh, uh, she grabbed the land of no naboth and his vineyard <clears throat> and his vineyard yeah when you read that uh, i mean portion we will understand that have i have uh, was asking Uh, to Naboth, that uh, uh, Naboth's vineyard, vineyard, to make the vegetable garden. Okay, to make the vegetable garden. But uh, uh, at first, uh, uh, Naboth was not willing to give that. Then, uh, I mean, uh, by the influence of uh, Jezebel, I have had to uh, kill Naboth, and they got the uh, vineyard, and they made it as a vegetable garden. Okay, that history we know that from. First Kings chapter twenty one and twenty two. So uh, the next, uh, I mean, character is written there that uh, she threatened to kill the prophet Elijah. That is First Kings chapter nineteen. When you read First uh, Kings chapter nineteen, that we read about uh, this uh, Jezebel. Uh, she threatened to kill the prophet Elijah. Prophet Elijah was a man of God. He was a prophet of God. Uh, he is known as a the greatest prophet of god and uh, i mean he was useful in the hands of god but this woman was trying to uh, kill that person kill that uh, prophet elijah because of many reasons so when you go through these uh, uh, chapters and uh, these verses and these portions so we have to understand one thing you know in the church of thyatira in the church of thyatira there was a woman uh, who was having the spirit of the spirit of jezebel so we we have been just discussing about who was jezebel in the old testament and what was the spirit of that person in the old testament so mainly there are three incidents in the old testament that shows jezebel was a wicked woman okay there are three incidents in the old testament that proves and that shows jezebel was a wicked woman number one i mean she used the political authority to gain the material prosperity she used the 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 political authority to gain the material prosperity this is one of the main point that we have to think about you know uh, jezebel even though she was the wife of ahab the king she was she was having the authority and she was having the political authority you know so she she was trying to use that political authority to gain the material prosperity to gain the material prosperity and secondly she promoted the baal worship in israel you know the people of israel they were only worshiping god jehovah but this woman jezebel promoted them to and encouraged them and compelled them to uh, worship the baal so she was promoting the baal worship in israel and the third one third incident also is written in the old testament that is she used uh, uh, the political influence to mercilessly destroy the prophets of jehovah that we already saw that these points okay so she used her political influence to mercilessly destroy the prophets of jehovah these are the three main incidents that jezebel did in the old testament in the old testament okay now when you go to new testament in revelation chapter 2 verse 20 we already read that i mean verse okay in new testament the other characteristics of jezebel spirit is mentioned okay in revelation chapter 2 verse 20 we see that, that the other characteristics of uh, jezebel's spirit you know this jezebel in the old testament that person is not same in the new testament but this person this woman in the thyatira church 
she she was a, she was a member of the Taitara Church, and she had the spirit of the uh, Jezebel who who was in in the in the Old Testament. So, when you read chapter okay, Revelation chapter two verse twenty, who was she? She pretends to be the prophetess, but she she was a false prophetess. Okay, she pretends to be the prophetess, but she was a false prophetess. Secondly, she teaches and leads the servants of God astray from God. In the particular verse it is written. She teaches and leads the servants of God away from God. From God. And the third one is she leads the people to commit immorality. She leads the people to commit immorality and the fourth spirit of Jezebel in the New Testament is, it is mentioned is she leads them to eat things sacrificed to idols. She leads them to eat things sacrificed to idols. Even the, the, the same problem uh, we already discussed uh, when we were studying about the church at Ephesus and the and uh, something which is written from the first Corinthians and all. So these are the things that we understand from about uh, the spirit of the Jezebel from the New Testament. Okay. Now we will go to the, uh, the the punishment of God and the death of Jezebel. The punishment of God and the death of Jezebel. So this I'm I'm speaking about the Jezebel of the Old Testament. Okay, Jezebel of the Old Testament. The punishment of God and the death of Jezebel is mentioned in First Kings and also in Second Kings. First Kings and also in Second Kings. Okay, especially let us read uh, uh, First King chapter twenty-one verse twenty-three. First King. Chapter 21, verse 23. And of Jezebel, the Lord also the dogs shall eat De Jezebel within the walls of Jezreel. Okay, so uh, in First Kings chapter 21, verse 23, we see that prophet Elijah made a prophecy about the death of Jezebel. Even before the death of Jezebel, Prophet Elijah was making a prophecy about how Jezebel is going to die and what is going to happen at the time of the death of Jezebel. What was that? The dogs will eat Jezebel in the districts of Jezreel. The dogs will eat Jezebel in the district of Jezreel. That is what we read in 1 uh, uh, Kings chapter 21, verse 23. And you know, when you when I think about the the situation while uh, Jezebel was dying, you know that is written in uh, Second Kings chapter nine. We will go to that verse. So Second Kings chapter nine, verses thirty six and thirty seven. You read that verse. Second Kings chapter nine, verses thirty six and thirty seven. Yeah. When. When they came back and told him, he said, this is the word of the Lord, which he spoke by his servant, Elijah and Tishbite. In the territory of Jezreel, the dogs shall eat the flesh of Jezebel, and the corpse of Jezebel shall be as, as dung on the face of the field in the territory of Jezreel, so that no one can say this is Jezebel. Okay, so already Elijah prophesied about the death of Jezebel, and in Second Kings, we we understand that uh, through these verses, we understand that it was it was a kind of violent death. It was a kind of violent death, and everything that Prophet Elijah was prophesying already fulfilled through the death of uh, uh, Jezebel. Okay, so that was the end of Jezebel, and that was the death and the punishment which was upon uh, Jezebel, the false prophetess. Okay, now. We will come to the uh, next point, that is the punishment for Jezebel and her followers. 
the punishment for Jezebel and her followers. That is from chapter 2, verses 21 to 23. Chapter 2, verses 21 to 23, the punishment for Jezebel and her followers. Um, let me tell you one thing from this point, you know, uh, the name of the woman mentioned here in these verses, okay, we will read that verse first, then we will move on. Yeah. Yes, we can read. Chapter 2, verse 21 through 20. I gave her time to repent, but she refuses oh. to repent of her sexual immorality. Behold, I will throw her onto the sick bed and the... <laughs> who commit adultery with her, I will throw into the great tribulation, unless they repent of her works, and I will strike her children dead. And all the churches will know that I am he who searches mind and heart, and I will give to, to each of you according of your work. Okay. So remember one thing, the name of the woman mentioned here in this verse, or in these verses, may not be the Jezebel, okay? uh, may not be the Jezebel of the Old Testament. Uh, but but it's a woman who was following the same teachings of Jezebel and also leading the Taithera believers for all kinds of idol worship and immoral activities. So that is that is what uh, that should be in our mind. You know, this is the person, this is the woman uh, in the Taithera church that she was trying to uh, uh, lead the Taithera believers also, even the servants of God also, the, the ministers also. They were influenced by this lady this woman you know uh, for all kinds of idol worship and uh, uh, immoral activities so that that would that is what <laughs> happened uh, in the church of taithera uh, from these verses here uh, we will see the punishment for her and her followers okay what are the punishment that god gives them uh, uh, for the for the woman jezebel and also for the followers of jezebel number one the individual punishment Individual punishment is the first one. Because it says that, indeed, I will cast her into a sick bed. Indeed, I will cast her into a sick bed. So that is the first, first punishment that is given for Jezebel. For, 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 sorry, uh, for, not for the Jezebel, but this is the punishment which is given for the woman who was having the same spirit of Jezebel in Thetera Church, okay? And second, I mean, uh, second one is the punishment on her followers. The punishment on her followers. It is written that, and those who commit adultery with her into great tribulation. That means those people, those who were committing adultery with this woman or his follower, her followers, will be going through the great tribulation. That's the second one, punishment. And the third one is the punishment on her generations. The punishment on her generation. What was that? It says that I will kill her children with death. I will kill her children with death. So that was the, that was the third punishment given to, uh, I mean, uh, related to this woman and uh, uh, her followers. So let me tell you one thing that, you know, uh, this is a warning for uh, today's church also, that the uh, hand of God will be heavy on the unrepentant people. You know, God is giving many opportunities for the people, you know, uh, even in every church, uh, the pastors and the leaders and the elders are always preaching about the, the repentance and everything, you know. But most of the time, many people are not uh, uh, able to accept that. And many people are not uh, just listening that and they are not ready to obey that, you know. That's the reason we can say that, you know, uh, sometimes the hand of God will be very heavy on the unrepentant people. That's what we see in, in, this, uh, uh, in this portion also. You know, it says God gave them many opportunities. God gave them many opportunities to repent about their sin, but they didn't turn to God. That's what we read there. You know, God gave many opportunities to those people to repent about their sin, but they didn't turn to God. They never repent. So God said, the unrepentant church will go through this severe tribulation. 
the unrepentant church will go through the severe tribulation. You know, during the time of, uh, uh, you know, our Holy Communion time, you know, Lord's Supper, uh, we used to read uh, one verse from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 30. It is very, very, very familiar verse for every one of us. Every time when we conduct the Holy Communion, we used to read that verse. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 30. What is that? You know, uh, many among you are sick and some die because they are participating in, in, in the Lord's Supper in an unworthy manner or without purity. You know, there are many people still continuing in sin. There are many people even in the Christian churches. They are continuing in their sins and evil and wicked things and everything. You know, still they are participating in the Holy Communion. And because of that reason, because of that reason, here, uh, Apostle Paul is saying in First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 30, that many of you are sick and some died because you are participating in the Lord's Supper in an unworthy manner or without any purity or holiness. So uh, this, uh, the, the next uh, example, you can take uh, Ananias and Sapphira. Ananias and Sapphira is the next ex example. Okay. Who is that? Okay, uh, what they did? They lived in the first century. Okay, they lived in the first century. Both of them died on the spot and the same day. Right? Both of them, Ananias and Sapphira, they died on the spot and same day. Why? Why? What was the reason? Because they spoke lies against the Holy Spirit. They spoke lies against the Holy Spirit. This is very important and this is very serious carefully we have to read that portions because it should not happen in our life in our church in our individuals in our society in our family we have to pray for that that help us lord help us to be obedient to the holy spirit and let, help us to be open in front of the holy spirit because holy spirit can see anything and thoughts eyes can see anything you know here we can understand that you know, those people were, I mean, lying against the Holy Spirit on the spot, they both died, okay, the same day. So, we, we, it must be a, it must be a warning for every one of us. And in Revelation chapter 2, verse 23, Jesus said, I am one who searches the minds and the hearts, right? Revelation chapter 2, verse 23 says that, I am the one who searches the the minds and the hearts of the people. That means he is all-knowing God. He is all-knowing God. And in the same verse itself, one more thing that Jesus is I mean, saying that I will give to each one of you according to your works. Amen. I will give to each one of you according to your works. Okay. So same thing is mentioned in Revelation chapter 22 verse 12 also. We'll read that verse. Revelation chapter 22, verse 12. The same thing is written in that portion also. Chapter 22, verse 12. Behold, I am coming soon, bringing my recompense with me to repay each one for what he has done. Yes. Okay. So uh, this also, okay. We have the reward. We have the, we, I mean, we have the reward. God is promising the reward for the people. Okay, according to our works, according to our works. Okay, same time, we must be repented and we must have that uh, uh, mind of repentance and uh, uh, let us be uh, faithful in the in the presence of God whenever we are coming to the presence of God and whenever we are living in this world. Okay, so let us have that faithfulness and let us uh, keep our faithfulness in the sight of God. Now we will go to the uh, verse 24. Yeah, uh, Revelation chapter 2, verse 24. Uh, that's the next heading. Uh, the remnant who are in Taitera Church. The remnant who are in Taitera Church. The remnant who are in Taitera Church. Shall we read that for, I mean, verse? But to the rest of you in Taitera who do not hold this teaching, who have not learned what some call the deep things of Satan, to you I say, I do not lay on you any other burden. Yeah. In this particular verse, we see that there is a remnant. 
Okay, here we see that there are still few people not ready to follow the teachings of Jezebel. So the, the teachings of Jezebel were providing in that area, in the church, but still there is a group of people. There is a, there is a few, there are a few people. They are not ready to follow the teachings of Jezebel, but they stood firm for biblical doctrines and values. Only few people, only few people. It is very clearly written. There is a remnant. Remnant means, uh, uh, you know, uh, it says, uh, I say to you that the rest of you are in Taitaira. That means there is a, 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 there is a small group which is not ready to follow the teachings of Jezebel. And they were always standing firm for the biblical doctrines and the values. So they did not hold these teachings. That's the meaning. They did not hold these teachings. They have not known the deep or depth things of the Satan. It is written very clearly that, you know, they have not known the deep things of Satan. You know, uh, that particular phrase, the Greek word which is used for the deep things is bathos. Bathos is the word which is used for deep things. Okay. And, and that was a Babylonian false religion. Bathos was a Babylonian false religion. And let us see why the Holy Spirit or Jesus is saying that they have not known a, a group of people or the remnant of the church. Okay. The, uh, a, a few people, few people. Okay. So that those people, they have not known the deep things of Satan. Okay. Why the Holy Spirit is saying in that way. Okay. The, the, the reason we are coming to that point, you know, the Greek word which is used for the deep things, it is bathos. And what is bathos? This is a Babylonian false religion. So what happens in those days with this Babylonian false religion? That is, this religion taught that I mean, only the priests and leaders are able to know the secrets or the mysteries of the the the, the Word of God. The common believers cannot understand the mysteries. That is the teaching of those people, those Babylonian religion called Babos. What is that? They were teaching them that only the priests and the leaders, the Babylonian religion were teaching, only the priests and the leaders are able to know the secrets and the common believers cannot understand the mysteries of the Word of God. So what happens? The same a group and same religions taught them, they insisted among the Christian believers and said only the priests are able to know the mysteries of God. Only the priests are able to know the mysteries of God. And this was the thought and this was the teaching of uh, the Babylonian religion. But that came to the Christian community also. That same thought came inside the Christian church also. And they started to say that I mean, they started to insist the people among the Christian believers and said only the priests are able to know the mysteries of God. They can only read and explain the Bible. Okay? The priests and the leaders are only, uh, 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 only permitted to read and explain the Bible. Uh, and the reading the Bible became restricted to the common believers. That means the common believers, the other believers were not able to keep a Bible or they were not able to read the Bible and they were not able to discuss anything from the Bible because only the priests were able and they had the authority to open the Bible and read and explain all those things. So, so that what they can do, they can uh, speak something I mean, uh, out, of, uh, out of their mind and whatever they believe, they can speak. So the common people, the believers, they have no... no uh, right to I mean, uh, question anything. So that is the, I mean, uh, that is the thing which was happening in those days. And what happened? They uh, they printed and published the Bible only in Latin language also. They published and and printed. Uh, they printed and published the Bible only in Latin language. That only the priest can read and explain all those things. That that was the situation. And another thing which is. Uh, very, very clearly we have to understand and these people this, this Babylonian religion uh, uh, those, on, on those days they brought the practice of holy merchandise the holy merchandise 
that means you can you can call it as a uh, intelligence ticket intelligence ticket holy merchandise is the intelligence ticket i will explain what is that what is the speciality of that ticket intelligence ticket intelligence ticket means you know if somebody uh, uh, is purposefully planning to do some kind of evil practices or immoral practices or activities they can get this intelligence ticket in advance from the priest got the point you know if somebody is planning and purposefully they are i mean okay next week i am going to this place and i am going to do all kinds of uh, i mean uh, bad practices and i'm going to do some immoral uh, practices or uh, uh, evil practices whatever it may be okay if that person or if that group is going to somewhere and doing plan to do something which is evil that person can come to the church and that person can get this intelligence ticket in advance from the priest and that is the permission for them to do all those practices that means that means and through buying this ticket through buying this ticket i mean for money the priest will proclaim their sins are forgiven now it is very interesting to understand you know when when the person is buying the ticket when the person is buying the ticket for money paying the money and getting the ticket then this person can, can do anything for that week and the priest will proclaim their sins are forgiven no problem already they have given the money and they have the permission they have the ticket to do all those things they can do that there is no problem because priest is deciding that one so that kind of practices came inside the christian church from the babylonian practice from the babylonian religion that was happening in those days but remember one thing bible says no human have the permission to forgive the sins of the people we know that no human have the permission to to i mean uh, uh, to uh, forgive the sins of the people but only the almighty god has the permission and god has the authority to do uh, all i mean uh, to, to to forgive the sins of the people the sins of the people that's what we i mean understand from the i mean uh, bible okay but this is what happened in those days in say the christian churches and that led the people to do more sins and more evil things okay now because of these things you know many people many christians were going away from the presence of god okay they were thinking that okay even though i am doing all these things i have the permission and i have that uh, intelligence ticket and i can do anything there is no problem at all my sins are forgiven already and my sins are uh, not valued okay so the same thing is happening today also in in some of the christian churches you know uh, uh, let me tell you one thing that you know uh, it is it is known as the uh, grace church or uh, some other kind of uh, uh, uh what is that uh, i i forgot the name you know uh, some of the uh, names are there the church names are there denominations are there so uh, uh that exceeding grace or something you know they say that okay uh, whatever i mean after getting salvation if you do anything there is no problem at all because you are doing everything with your body and your spirit is saved so after getting salvation everything is perfect you can do anything but god will not and uh, uh, take uh, i mean any control over that things but you have the grace of god so because you have the grace of god you can continue in all kinds of evil things and uh, i mean doing everything no problem do maybe uh, from monday uh, through saturday you can do anything outside the church and sunday come back and ask for the grace of god god will forgive you so that's what they teach them okay so uh, so but we understand that it is not the pattern of the bible you know uh, we did not have the pastor did not have any any authority to forgive the sins of the people god alone is having the i mean uh, the, the authority to forgive the sins of the people okay but the pastor can bless them the pastor can i mean uh, uh, what is that okay a prayer for them okay that's okay but at the same time god alone is having the authority to i mean uh, forgive the sins of the people so okay now even today what happens in our christian churches we will see that 
today what is happening in our christian churches when you think about all these things okay many people are mingling with the cultural false practices mingling with the cultural false practices there are many practices among us you know so the christian soul so is mingling with all those cultural cultural false practices okay the good practices are there cultural practices are there that's fine but when we mingle with the people with the, the cultural false practices that i mean uh, makes us sinful and that is the that is against uh, the will and purpose of god against the word of god and again uh, the christians and the christian churches fail to defend the sin most of the time we fail to defend the sin and another thing the absolute truths are forsaken we are not remembering about the truth the absolute truth most of the time the absolute truths are forsaken and also we are adopting many of the modernism the adoption of the modernism that is the other thing the adoption of modernism and the other thing is love of money and power love of money and power okay but here jesus says in this in this uh, i mean verse maybe chapter 2 verse uh, 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 yeah 20 24 it says that i mean uh, there are few people or a remnant there are few people or a remnant is there who does not know the secret things of satan that means that doesn't mean that okay uh, the, those people are not knowing anything about the secret of the satan they know everything but the people who does not follow the practices of satan those people the remnant people or a few uh, people uh, from theotokos they are not ready to follow the practices of satan okay so the deeds of satan is known as the false teachings of uh, uh, which was which has prevailing among the believers of that era you know i already told you and what was the uh, uh, what was the false teachings that was prevailing among the uh, church of Thyatira, the believers uh, of the church of Thyatira. So uh, here it is mentioned that the deeds of the Satan, the deeds of the Satan, that is known as the false teachings which was prevailing among the uh, believers of uh, Thyatira. Uh, when you go to that portion, we understand, you know, where we, we have been studying about the Smyrna, the church of Smyrna and Pergamos and now Thyatira. In, in Smyrna, church there were uh uh people from synagogue of satan as we already discussed about from chapter 2 verse 9 chapter 2 verse 9 we already discussed that in smyrna okay there were people from the synagogue of satan so we we are thinking about the influence of the satan in every church the influence of the satan in every church how the satan is influencing the people you know in smyrna church what is that There, 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 there were people from the synagogue of Satan. In Pergamos church, there was the throne of Satan. Pergamos, okay? There was the throne of Satan. So the influence of Satan in Pergamos was this. In chapter 2 verse 13. But in, in Thetera church, there was the depths or secrets of Satan. Chapter 2 verse 24. there was the there was the depths or the secrets of satan secret of satan or the mystery of satan is uh, that means you know that secret uh, the, the satan has some kind of tricks and schemes to defeat the people of god to defeat the children of god so that is that is what we uh, understand that i mean uh, they were having uh, uh, the, the spirit of jezebel okay but remember there are only few people and there will be only few people in the churches those who want to be faithful and standing firmly for the biblical doctrines this is very important to understand you know in those days also there were only few people and there 
uh, they, I mean, uh, the, the, these people were always, I mean, faithful and they were always standing uh, very firm for the biblical doctrines on those, on those days. And now also there are few people in every churches. In every churches, you check with the, every churches, there will be few people. Always they wanted to know Jesus more and more. And always they wanted to worship God always. And they want to be faithful and holy uh, in the presence of God. There will be some people. Okay. So let us pray that, oh, oh Lord, I mean, help me to be the, member, uh, the one, of, one among them. Okay. Even, you know, in the first century also, there were uh, some people who stood against the false practices in those days also. Let me give you uh, some of the examples. Okay, maybe maybe uh, two, three uh, names will be given uh, for you for for you for, for as an example uh, for you that uh, in those days also uh, these people stood against the false practices. Okay, uh, the number one example number one is uh, uh, you might have heard about uh, John Wycliffe. Yeah, John Wycliffe. Uh, you know. Uh, uh, there are uh, three, three, okay, three, three people are there. For example, um, uh, he said, uh, "I will try to." This man, this John Wycliffe, said, uh, "I will try to make the Bible available for all the common people." John Wycliffe, he said, "I will try to make the Bible available for all the common people." And I told you once that uh, the Bible, reading Bible or opening Bible, was restricted for. The common people, common believers. But this John Wycliffe came, came and he said, no, 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 it should be open for all the people and it should be available for all the common people and it should not be limited only for the priest. Let us give to the people, let them read and let them understand, let them have that discussion and let them, I mean, uh, get the spiritual growth, you know. Uh, that uh, That's the reason he translated the Bible and distributed to the all people. Because of that only, this man, John Wycliffe, he went through many persecutions only because of this reason. So we have to thank God for John Wycliffe and all of the people, those who were laboring and those who were working hard, putting their effort, full effort, to make it possible to the common people. That's the reason that we are here and we are reading Bible and we are getting more and more about Jesus Christ. Amen. So we have to give thanks to the Lord for giving this John Wycliffe and other people into the Christian church, those who were standing firm for Christ in their faith. Amen. So this man also went through many persecutions because of this reason. And the second person, second example is uh, Jan Hus. Jan Hus is the second person. He was one of the disciples of Wycliffe. He was one of the disciples of Wycliffe. Uh, he, stood, he also stood family uh, for biblical truth. You know, in those days, the church leadership said to him, the church leadership said to him, you should not stand against the leaders. Okay? If you do that, you will be imprisoned and killed. Listen very carefully. This man, Jan Hus, was the disciple of Wycliffe. And he was always standing firm for the biblical truth. And he also was following the teachings of uh, Wycliffe. Then what happened? The church leadership, they were, not, uh, uh, they were not happy with this man. And they said, if you, if you are standing this uh, like this, and if you are standing against the church leaders and their thoughts, if you do that, you will be imprisoned. And at last you will be killed. But you know, what was the answer of this person? The answer, the reply of this uh, Janus, he said, you know, even if you offer me a chapel of gold or a golden building, I won't reject the truth of the Bible. Listen very carefully. They were offering many things. And they said, if you if you are not accepting this offer and if you are not, uh, uh, I mean, I mean, if you are standing against the leaders, then you are going to be innocent and you are going to be killed. But his reply is very interesting that he said, okay, offer me whatever it may be. If you are offering me a chapel of gold, that is a golden building. Okay, if you are saying that, okay, we will give you a golden building for you, the building which is made out of gold. 
even if you offer that, I won't reject the truth of the Bible. And he was burned alive. He was burned alive. And the third person, the third person, third example I can give you, that is the hung latter man. This person, okay, third, the third one is uh, two persons are there, and Nicholas Radley also is there. Nicholas Radley also is there. Hug, Leitmer, and Nicholas Radley, they were born alive for the truth of the Bible. These all people were standing firm for the truth of the Bible, and they were born alive only because this reason that they were always standing for the truth of the Bible. So this evening, I mean, at the end of this class, let me let me exhort and encourage you all this evening that do not allow any false practices or rituals or immoral activities or idol worship or satanic works of worship into our life, into our family, into our church. Rather, let us all stand together in unity and fight against all those things and stand firm for the truth of the word of God. Amen. So this is my encouragement and this is my exhortation for all the people, those who are attending in this Bible study. You know, there are many things are happening all around us. There are many things happening in many churches, many denominations. I mean, so I, I forgot the name, you know, hyper grace. I told you, you know, the hyper grace churches are there. You no, know, they are always saying that okay, grace is there, grace of God is there. You can do anything. No, it's not like that. Okay, we have the grace of God, but that is not the permission to do the sin. So let us all come to the presence of God this evening, as we were listening about what was the character and the spirit of Jezebel and what was the, I mean, false practices that Jezebel was, I mean, I mean, uh, trying to influence and prevail among the people of the Taitera Church. Okay, so we have been studying about all, all those things, and uh, at last, uh, I mean, we saw that if they are not repented, there is a punishment. Okay, and, and at last, we have been seeing that there were many people, even even in the midst of the persecution, they stood. I mean, they stood firm for the faith of God and the truth of God, even if they were born alive. I mean, they were always standing firmly for the name of the Lord. I mean, so let us also unitedly, I mean, with unity, stand together against all the false teachings and everything, idol worship and immoral activities and satanic works and everything, and all the false practices and rituals, and let us submit ourselves in the mighty hand of God. Hallelujah. I request everyone to close your eyes in the presence of God and let us pray. Hallelujah. For a moment, let us pray. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Let us, I mean, bring ourselves to the mighty hand of God. God, God presence is with us. Hallelujah.